What's up, folks? This is Steel. Welcome to Steelcast 27. Once again, today I have for you a subscriber series video featuring the North Carolina, driven by Slack. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. The subscriber series is basically for you guys. You subscribe to my channel, you'll be given the opportunity to email me or upload videos and link them to me, and I will choose them and narrate them and throw them up on, uh, on YouTube. I'm trying to get one out every week, but there's going to be gaps. That's all right. Real life. If you're interested in learning more about the subscriber series, PM me at the World of Warships forums at Steel Reserve or email me at steelcast27 at gmail.com and I'll give you the details. But for now, let's get into it. Um, I chose this one. Because it's in North Carolina. North Carolina is just a cool ship, number one. But Slack puts a shape charge on the west side of Two Brothers and blasts his way through like he owns the place here. Now, Two Brothers is one of those maps that you either love it, you hate it, or yeah, you come in somewhere in the middle. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle because in some regards, this game really has some really cool aspects to it. It's got some really cool fleet dynamics to it on each of the sides. The negatives, well, there are two. The first one is, um, sometimes the teams go in opposite directions. So it's like a swinging door. And I hate that. Um, the next negative is the fact that some of the players don't necessarily in, uh, employ fleet tactics on this. So if you don't have a destroyer out front spotting, if you don't have cruisers in support, if your battleships aren't getting good shots or necessarily putting themselves in a position to take good shots, then the whole whole side of the map can crumble. Oh man, those guns. I love the sound of the North Carolina's guns. Look at that spread. Now, if those are timed right, he can crack that Otago oh, just over. Anyway. If the DDs are out in front spotting, and the the battleships are doing their job, this this side of the this side of the map can really be interesting. I mean, when you have a cruiser fight going on, that's when you know the fight's good. But sometimes it just doesn't work out like that. The first part of the match, the teams kind of feel each other out a little bit, trying to determine where the enemy battleships are, and it looks like Slack found a Fuso crack. 16 inch shell to the citadel how you like that buddy the north carolina's guns can kind of be like a blunderbuss though like a shotgun and uh, they don't cooperate but so far as i've heard and seen that plunge is deadly and do you think that fuso learned his lesson that's a tight spread right there Ooh, that could be a finishing shot if they connect oh another citadel what is this Fuso doing? He's determined to get dis destroyed. That's crazy. Oh my god. Look at this. Everyone's broadside. I don't think Slack knows who to shoot at. But, well, you know, obviously that slow Fuso broadside. Do you think the Fuso would have seen the North Carolina by now? And known to angle in or turn out? I think that was a missed target there. That's tough luck, but... The way this Fuso's driving, I don't think he's going to last very long. Slack better get those rear guns in action. Looks like that's what he's doing, swinging around. He's debating whether or not to go for the Otago. But that island, watch out for that island, Slack. He got the three off for the Otago. Let's see what happens. Now he's forgetting about those shells. Ah, they got clipped. Sorry, Slack. Anyway, there's still plenty of... Oh. <laughs> Slack, man. Your aces today, baby. That Fuso, though, he's kind of feeding you a little bit. But you are teaching him some World of Warship physics. A battleship that moves in a straight line stays in a straight line unless acted upon by 16 inch AP. <laughs> I made that up. Oh boy, Colorado. Man, I play the Colorado right now, and uh, it takes you 20 minutes to get to the match. And most matches, your team is either dead or already running away. <laughs> I 
But what's shocking to me is how no one seems to be addressing Slack whatsoever. It's like they don't even regard his presence. You know, there is a WASD key people, a map. You have eyes. But <laughs> I guess they lack a sense of self-preservation, really. Now they're shooting back, finally. He's already halfway up the map. I like this approach that Slack, Slack's taken, though. It's one I haven't usually employed. I usually drive down to the, you know, the two line and move move up there, the standard approach. But this one, this is a bulldog move here. The only thing he's got to worry about is that Fubuki that's out there somewhere. Because it gives you a limited place to uh, turn away from torpedoes, and that's the only negative about it. But, yeah. Well, there's that Colorado out there still. He finally decided to turn around. The uh, loneliest ship in World of Warships, the Colorado. Late to the fight. Every match. <laughs> well, he's shooting HE, so I don't know how you get through seven levels of World of Warships and still shoot HE at broadside ships in a battleship. Drives me crazy. But finally, it seems that uh, <laughs> Slack has gotten some attention. Well, basically, it's a four against one at this point. Oh, God. Pensacola. Full zoom. Looking into his soul. <laughs> this is the torp charge without the torpedoes. Nice. I think he's looking for a ram. This is where you want to shoot angled ships or uh, cruisers that want to drop torps when they're angled. Boom! It, it, it gives your AP shells a time to arm inside the ships. There's no overpen in that, baby. Well, now I think you can see why I picked this match. It's full bulldog mode. Oh, now here come those torps. I knew it! Oh, he's turning away. Is he going to be able to split them? Under fire from that Nuremberg. That's a pain. Nuremberg could be sit, though. Easy. Well... There you go. Wow, look at that. <laughs> oh my god. Don't forget those torps, man. Okay, I think he got that one. No more. Oh no! No! Oh boy, now you're flooding. That's bad news for Slack. This could be the end, but look at the damage he's done. Man, just kicking the door down. But I think Slack had that cap in mind. If he didn't take that torp, he'd been he'd be in good shape right now. But mm, just a little bit, of, a couple of hits, and he's finished. But I see what he was trying to do. The enemy team is putting pressure on Slack's cap. So this is that swinging door effect that I was telling you about. It's annoying. But they did make a mistake here, the enemy team, as they didn't turn around to address the fact that uh, Slack's team was moving up so fast because of Slack. But it's also really important to note that who Slack, in, Slack engaged. And they were mostly battleships. I think most of his shots were towards battleships until the end. Um, the Fuso, the Colorado, they went down, allowing his team to move up. But they did wind up winning, and Slack had a great match. Five Citadels came in second place on his team. Not bad. That's a good, solid day's work. That's Yeoman's work, Slack. 125,000 damage. Thanks for the submission. I'll catch you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like or comment. And if you're interested in seeing more content in the future, subscribe. My live stream is currently on Twitch at the URL you can see right there. And if you're interested in even more World of Warships videos, I highly recommend The Taste. The link is down below. Thanks again.